Yeah, it was a very difficult year uh, for Gypsy or for Louise, as she was still called at this time. Um, when Vaudeville died, which was partly a function of talking movies becoming very popular. Yeah. Uh, you know, and before she was discovered by Minsky's burlesque in New York City. Um, this is a year she never liked to talk about. This is a year that was not in the musical or in her memoir. It's, nobody really knew about this. Um, and, and she and her mother were desperate. Uh, they were starving. They often ate dog food to survive. Um, and she was uh, forced to do things against her will during this time. I, I spoke, spoke to both Gypsy's son and her sister about this period, and they talked about how difficult it was for her and the unsavory characters and situations she found herself in and, and sort of, um, uh, you know, this period would also be um, what her mother would draw from later on when she decides to blackmail her. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Some of the stuff that was going on was really nasty. Yeah. The, the other thing that, that's going on uh, is that, uh, Louise is recre- is creating Gypsy Rose Lee. Yeah, uh, leaving Louise behind. Louise is I would describe her maybe as dumpy and and and, and not a showbiz personality. And uh, was it under Minsky's guidance that she was able to do this? Well, she started before that. Uh, you know, there was. Um during this very difficult year uh, and and you know she started finding her way um and and one of what she did was use her intellect this is somebody who didn't have a lot of formal schooling but was very naturally smart um was well read always read as a kid on the vaudeville right, circuit right. and was incredibly ambitious uh you know even when she realized i i can't sing i can't dance i don't have any talent um she always had it in the back of her mind that she was going to be a star uh, when she was a kid on the vaudeville circuit she would doodle one word the word money over and over again um and so she always had this ambition. Uh, and, and with that in mind, she figured, well, what do I have at my disposal? And she had her brain. She had her wit. She had a facile mind. She had a, a great sense of humor. Um, and she had a distance from sex. This is an accidental sex symbol, somebody who um, was able to see the humor in sex. And people really had never seen that before. And they responded to that. Did they? Wow. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she, was, she was quite the star. Yeah. She was really, uh, really a great star. And that form of, if you, if I can say it, vaudeville burlesque, you know, survived the Depression years. Yeah. And, you know, she was making money. She was, uh, you know, when she started off at Minsky's Burlesque, when she finally became discovered, uh, you know, 11,000 people a week were coming to see her. Um, and huh? 11,000 people a week. Uh, she was an immediate star at, at Minsky's. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it was a sensation. And I think part of it, you know, I, I try to think who I would just par- compare her to today. Yeah. Uh, and I'd like to say if, if Lady Gaga and Dorothy Parker had a secret love child, it would have been Gypsy <laughs> Rose Lee. Um, and part of that was just her dramatic presence. Um, you know, she would show up at uh, opening nights at the Met wearing a full length cape made of orchids. Um, and I just uh, read recently that, that Lady Gaga is obsessed with Gypsy Rose Lee. And of course, she showed up somewhere recently wearing a full length cape made of meat. Um, yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. so orchids, I would prefer uh, orchids, but I you could see um, anyone who considers herself a provocateur today is, is drawing from Gypsy's playbook.